morning, y'all. Welcome back to Amazon Progress. We have moved. Welcome to my new house. Of course, I had to also get sick on moving day. So it took a little longer than expected to get back in the groove of things. So this is really like my second and a half day of feeling somewhat normal. <laughs> Not 100%, but better than I was. So start, still getting back my appetite and kind of still have to take breaks because I get tired pretty easily. Things like that, but we're working with it. I have my favorite coffee here for one point per cup. There will be a second cup, I can guarantee you. And I will see you when it's time to eat breakfast. Feels good to be back. You can see me and the food at the same time. This is gonna be so much fun. I'm gonna start off by making egg in a holes because it's simple and two points. <laughs> so you can't really beat that. I'm starting off with Sarah Lee 45 calorie bread. I like the hearty multigrain. Uh, it is a whole grain, so that means fiber. We want fiber. If you can add fiber and protein into all your meals, you'll be fuller and happier. <laughs> I'm gonna make two, so this is two points because it's one point per piece. Uh, the eggs are zero point. I'm gonna have some fruit on the side, zero point. I'm gonna make some for my husband as well. Cause I'm loving like that. And he's also outside working hard. So if you hear anything, oh, there he is. Uh, you just wanna cut a hole into your bread, trying to keep the bread around it attached so that you can put the egg in the hole. I know it's groundbreaking. Uh, I actually have enough room in my kitchen now that I can have my cookie cutters inside. So I'm gonna use a cookie cutter, but I often use a like mason jar lid because I didn't wanna go out to the garage to get my cookie cutters. But now we got a big kitchen. <laughs> it's so much fun. Okay, cut a hole. So you want one that doesn't go all the way, look, you can see it in my navy shirt, doesn't go all the way through, so you got little edges and then these are like the delicious croutony bits that you get to eat all right meanwhile i have a non-stick pan heating up so it's nice and hot and ready to go and we're going to take this over to the stove that's way over here now so i have a pan that's nice and preheated here i'm going to add some avocado oil i like to use a high heat oil and I think avocado oil doesn't have much flavor, which I like. Throw in our little pieces of toast. And on these little guys, I'm gonna give them a little, put them like there. I'm gonna give them a little extra spray just so they get extra crisped. My gosh, are these extra large? Oh, he did, he bought extra large eggs. I'm gonna get extra large protein. All right, right in the hole. Gonna go wash my hands. All right, and then while this is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and add some salt and pepper. And then how long this cooks really depends on how hot your stove top is. I'm gonna let mine cook about two minutes, basically until it's set enough where I can flip it and uh, these are nice and toasty. I think it's ready with these extra large eggs. It's throwing me off a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna add a little bit more. Avocado spray. And we're just we're gonna hope for the best, guys. Come on. Flip quickly. Oh, I got a little aggressive with the maybe don't maybe don't throw it. That that might be a good idea. Alright, less aggressive flipping. We can do it. Oh yeah, okay, we're good, we're good. Sometimes I like to show you what I do for my husband just so that if you have more points or if you have a loved one who doesn't need lower calories, they have a good option for them too. We're going to eat the exact same thing except I'm gonna use butter instead of avocado spray because it's, it's butter. That's it, that's the only difference. No cooking two meals. A diet meal for you and the meal for the rest of the family. Now, this is a lifestyle. We're all gonna be in this together. 
So this entire plate is two points. If you wanna zest it up a little bit, you can add some crushed red pepper flakes. <clears throat> and then I just made myself just a little fruit salad. I like to prep my fruit when I get it home from the grocery store. So I wash it, cut it, do all the things I need to do. So I have pineapple, strawberries, and a couple grapes. Oh, two points and a ton of food. I thought I'd go ahead and show you how I like to prep my fruit when I get it home. So I get really cold water in my sink. I've already disinfected my sink, make sure there's no bacteria in that sink. And then I add cold water and a splash of white distilled vinegar, and then throw in all of the produce that I want cleaned. This is all from the grocery store that we bought yesterday and I didn't take the time to do it because I knew I was filming today, honestly. <laughs> Once we get all of our goodies in there, we're gonna let it chill out for like 10 minutes before I rinse it and let it dry. Sometimes I hand dry it, sometimes I just let it dry on a towel, depends on how much time I have. Now that everything else is out, I'm going to open up these strawberries and add some baking soda as well. Y'all, I wash and cut strawberries for a living and these things are disgusting. <laughs> Please really take the time to wash them well because you'd be amazed how disgusting the water gets at work when we're washing these strawberries. Once they're set in the water for about five minutes, then I will rinse them and let them dry. Like I said, I like to prep my fruit when I get it home. We actually went to the grocery store yesterday and got a few more things because have you tried the pineapples and strawberries like right now? They are so delicious. They taste like it's summertime. It's been amazing. So we've been eating the heck out of them. So I thought I'd teach you how to cut the pineapple because this is literally what I do. I have people ask me what I do. I work for ATB in the produce department, cutting all the fruit and making guacamole, ranch, all that stuff. So this is literally my job. I'm the person to teach you. <laughs> so we have our pineapple and it was washed. I know that you're not gonna eat the skin, but you do have to cut through the skin. So if there's anything on the outside, once you cut through it, you're gonna contaminate the inside if you don't wash it. So that's why I like to wash it. I'm gonna use a nice knife here and we're gonna cut off the top and bottom. I don't do this, I like to spin it and now it's comfortable for me to cut again since I'm right-handed. Now that the top and bottom are off, we're gonna stand that bad boy up. And we're just gonna go around the outsides cutting off all that. And you wanna cut in enough that you're cutting all of the brown bits away. It's fine. Like you can normally see from the top where the little brown holes are. Just make sure you're clearing it on the other side of that. So you're not gonna have to recut. No one wants to cut like five times to get all the brown spots off. We don't want this, this goes in the trash. Or your compost or whatever, whatever situation you got going on in your house. All right, from this point, if you want rings, put it on one of those flat sides, cut sideways. You can have rings, you can get a little cookie cutter to cut out the middle of each ring to get the core out. I'm not gonna bother with that. I like mine in chunks or in spears. We're actually gonna use some of this tonight for dessert. We're gonna uh, cook it up on the grill with some cinnamon. It's gonna be delicious and zero points. Um, but I'm gonna leave it in, some of it in spears and then cut the others into pineapple chunks. So let me actually get you onto the table so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So now you can clearly see the core of the pineapple. We're gonna cut around that. I'm gonna do that in a specific way because when you're cutting up hundreds of pineapples, you wanna do it efficiently as possible. So I'm gonna do a hashtag cut around the core and I'll have really pretty spears going all the way down. I'm just gonna use my hand to stabilize, move away. Once I'm there, I'm gonna use my hand to stabilize again. Again, just cutting around that core. And I'm going to twist, because again, I want it to be convenient for me to cut. I don't wanna to have to move my hand in weird ways to cut, because that's how we can have accidents. So you see I've cut on that side of the core, and I'm gonna cut on this side of the core, doing the exact same motion with my hand. And this actually can be, I'll just fall away. That's fine. And 
And now I can just pull that core right on out. And I have these beautiful spears. I'm gonna cut these in half for grilling. Let's see what we'll do. One, two, three. We'll do four of the spears for grilling tonight. And again, I'm just gonna cut these in half. And so that will go on the grill and uh, not fall apart and be really nice. And then the rest of these, I can just line up and cut this way. You can cut it as small or as large as you'd like. I want mine bite size. And then I prefer storing fruit in a mason jar because I just feel like it lasts a lot longer. If I have a lot of it, like cantaloupe or watermelon, I'll put it into different containers, like the long rectangle ones. And then if I wanted individual portions of this, I would make it into little mason jars, which I'll do with my strawberries. But normally pineapple, I like to mix with stuff just because it does tear up my mouth if I eat too much of it at once. And there we are. That is my pineapple ready. Let's do some strawberries. We have our nice clean berries. Now I'm gonna eat all these within four days just so that they're the freshest that they can be. I like to buy my produce twice a week on this kind of fruit stuff. Things like apples and grapes, normally they can last longer, but things like pineapple and strawberries, I really want them to be eaten within like four days. So I have a few smaller mason jars here that I'm gonna use for the individual, like we need a snack fast, grab and go. And I'm gonna use this as well for like when I'm making my little fruit salads like I did earlier, that I can just pour some out of this. I cut the top off. You don't have to use a big knife for this, but it's already dirty, might as well. I just rinsed off my cutting board and my knife. And I just like to quarter my strawberries because that's how I prefer to eat them. I'm telling you, they have been so delicious where I live right now in Texas. So give them a try. If you've been waiting for those like summer berries, give them a try. Oh, I forgot to buy blueberries. Oh, dang. I think we're going to Target today. Y'all, I have now live in a town where there's a Target and it will be my third time in three days <laughs> to go to Target. It is a problem. Oh Lord, but it's been fun. All right, we're just gonna, like, look at that. Look, look how deliciously red and amazing. I'm so excited. All right, gonna continue to Trug along, and then I just find that if I have all of my produce washed, cut, eye level in the fridge, I'm so much more likely to eat it. Like if I am in a snack attack or, you know, moment where I need some food fast and this isn't washed or ready to go, I am far less likely to reach for this and far more likely to reach for something that is you know, more processed, packaged, which, you know, there's rooms in our diet for that as well, but we want a very healthy lifestyle where we have a mixture of all foods and a lot of those being things that are super nutrient dense like this and on Weight Watchers, this is zero points and it tastes like joy and happiness. Best of both worlds. Have I blabbed enough? Can you tell I've been gone? All right, I had a couple berries left over from what we bought a couple days ago. So about half of this is from the other jar. So you could get about two of these one cup jars and one of these bigger jars out of one of the, what is it, pints of strawberries. That's what you get out of one, but I had a little extra. So now we have all these delicious fruits ready to go. We're on a roll. I might as well go ahead and prep my veggies for dinner because I already have everything out. Why not? All right, since we're already here, we're already ready, we're in the groove, we're in the mood, let's prep for dinner. I'm gonna go ahead and cut up my bell peppers. Like I said, we're having beef fajitas, so I want plenty of bell pepper and onion to go with that to really bulk up the veggies. I'm also gonna make a homemade pico de gallo, so I like it best when it's been sitting for a couple hours and it's all like melded together in flavor, so might as well make it now. So first, our bell pepper. I actually caught those without looking. That was pretty impressive. <laughs> You agree?
It was awesome. Yeah, okay. He's, 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 yeah. I'm not threatening him with the knife. So. No. Generally not very uh, coordinated either. <laughs> so that Makes was... it eagerly impressive. <laughs> to cook so I'm just gonna package them separately that way if my husband wants to cook those first and then add the onion he's free to do so I had half an onion chilling out in here, but since he's already dirty, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up my jalapenos. My husband is a big fan. Uh, I'm a wuss, so a little bit goes a long way. I'm gonna dice about half of one for my pico, and I'm gonna slice up the rest of them. And then we're gonna wash our hands very well, because if you saw the video where I didn't do that, and then I burned my nose, and then I tried to wash my nose, with soap and then I blew a bubble uh, cause you know, breathing. And then that bubble popped in my eye. It was a, it was a hot mess, okay? You know, better yet, go, go grab some gloves. And he likes some of the seeds and everything. So that's what he gets. as well. We have a griddle, like a big black stone griddle outside that we used to cook. So that's what we're going to cook all that on. So it'll go quite quickly. And this is what I'm going to use for the pico. Since I'm using this jalapeno for my pico de gallo, I'm going to make sure I cut it extra, extra small. I really fine mince just because I don't want any large chunks of jalapeno because I will light myself on fire. And again, when making pico de gallo, I like to use equal parts of Roma tomato, red onion, and cilantro. So really however much you need. I'm gonna make three Roma tomatoes worth of pico de gallo. So I'm gonna cut my Roma and get it into this glass jar into a level uh, layer. And then I'm just gonna see how much that is. I'm gonna try to match that with how much red onion and cilantro I cut. Again, I like mine to be on the smaller side with all of my chunks here. So I'm gonna cut them nice and small. But if you like a thicker, chunkier pico, you do you, boo. So for those three Roma tomatoes, I ended up using just over half a red onion. And I went ahead and diced all my red onion and then I have red onion in the fridge now for later in the week that I don't have to worry about cutting. It's already cut. And then I just put that in the layer on top of the tomato, again, trying to match the same thickness of the layer. I'm gonna do the same with the cilantro. And then it is your choice if you wanna add the jalapeno. I'm gonna sprinkle just a little bit on top. And that, again, is optional. Now that I have about three equal layers, I'm gonna to top this with some lime juice. I ended up using one and a half limes so far. Once I try this later, after the flavors have been sitting together, I can decide if I want to add more lime, more salt or not. But I'm going to let this sit for a couple hours before deciding that. 
once I was tossing it together here, I could tell I didn't have enough lime. So that's when I ended up adding that extra half because I want it to be like all a little bit wet with lime juice because I want it to marinate in that lime juice. That's why it makes it delicious. This is the only way I will eat raw tomato is as pico and cilantro really, you know, pico is just a miracle worker. All right, we've prepped, we've cleaned. We're still recovering, so now we nap. That's, that's the rules. I'd say I don't make them up, but I do, at least in this house. When it was time for lunch, I threw together a salad for myself. I used this Buffalo Ranch kit. I make this into three servings, so it's five points for a third of the bag. And then I added some chicken that we had grilled earlier in the week. I didn't even warm it up, just threw on cold chicken, and it's absolutely delicious. We are almost completely done with the house. I thought I'd give you a little tour, a little new house tour. So this is the front door. So you come in and... Um... See this beautiful bookshelf and tree and painting. The only thing we don't have done is my husband's bourbon cabinet, and that's because the movers lost the pins for the shelves, so we had to order new pins. So, so all of this will be in there whenever we get them in the mail. These three pictures I get asked about quite a bit. They used to be behind my couch. I guess technically they still are. I got them off of Etsy. They're prints that I ordered off of Etsy and just got frames from Amazon. I love buying things on Etsy. We're like real artists. This is where a real photographer went and took pictures and those are her pictures. And then our living room. That hallway will take you down in a minute. On to our dining room. <clears throat> And our kitchen where my husband is putting delicious foods out. Ignore the uh, filming equipment. This is our back patio where he is making magic happen. Got our bell peppers and jalapenos. He's just using avocado oil so this will be zero points. We got these little twinkle lights that will be plugged in later which is nice because it's all screened in so mosquitoes in Texas. Not today, sucker. Let's go this way. I'm really bad at doing filming tours. Boop, 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 boop. This way is the guest room. This is my mom is actually on her way. And this is where she will be living for the next, you know, few days. <laughs> my daughter's room. This is my daughter's room. She's got like a little, actually a big desk, <laughs> the mirror. There we go. This is the her bathroom and the guest bathroom. Beep, beep, beep. And then also off of Etsy, we got pictures from Scotland. So that one is actually a photo from Scotland and we'll go down this way. We'll find some more in our bedroom. So this is the hallway that takes you to the garage and the laundry room. Another picture from Scotland, again, from an actual photographer, just gorgeous. And this is our bedroom, my husband's bedroom. So we have a Highland cow, which is kind of what also inspired the different pictures from Scotland. That's also my heritage. It also matches the beautiful leather that I love, like those rich tones. This is the desk that I just refurbished or whatever. This is my grand, my husband's grandmother's desk, great grandmother's desk from the 1930s. And my daughter had destroyed it. And so I stripped it with him and then I stained it and polyurethaned it. Got a little mirror. This is pretty cool, y'all. Got this off of Amazon. And now I can do my makeup here. I got these little organizers. Look at this, oh. Y'all, my little OCD heart is so happy. It is so happy. Okay, sorry. Uh, so that picture is also from Scotland. And this is one's a lot larger in person than it looks on the, on the video. Isn't it so cute? Just that little house. Hi, little guy. I wanna live here.
pretty cute. And then we have a nice big bathroom. So these are, I don't know who exactly, someone in my husband's family from a long time ago whittled those. So those kind of follow us around. We each get our own closet, which is pretty nice. So this is definitely the um, nicest house I've ever owned <laughs> or lived in. We are renting, but uh, look at all that space, all for me. All right, I'm terrible at a house tour, but that's my house and I'm pretty happy about it. So I feel very blessed to be here. So I'm going to have three ounces of the beef for three points. And I have two corn tortillas for three points. That's six points. The pico is zero points. You try that? If you want to make your own guacamole, smash up some avocados and throw some of the pico in it. Add a little extra lime juice and you have delicious homemade guac. Add some salt pepper. We did not. We just bought it. <laughs> because it's made fresh at HEV. So I'm gonna have plenty of pico. I put uh, two points worth, which is a fourth a cup of guac. There's jalapenos if we want, plenty of nice veggies, limes. This is gonna be a delicious and beautiful dinner. Here we have it. I decided to go with one point worth of guac because it's already a good amount of guac. So I'm gonna eat that just like a little mixture and then with my two tortillas. Delicious. Delicioso. The coals are still hot from the beef that we did. And so we just sprinkled cinnamon all over those pineapples, kind of shook it up in that Tupperware, and now they are on the fire. Y'all, this is an underrated dessert. It is absolutely delicious. If you have hot coals, get you some pineapple. And there's what our patio looks like when the lights are on. Here is our dessert. Zero points, tons of flavor. Hopefully. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you had some like Halo Top vanilla ice cream on top of this, I'm sure that would be absolutely fantastic. You could also use like Stevia or your favorite uh, like monk fruit sweetener and add that on top as well. So as it hits that flame, it kind of chars up and uh, like, like a creme brulee kind of coating on the outside, but this is equally delicious like this. That's good. Mm -hmm. All right, friends, I have only used 16 points, but like I said, I am getting over being sick and I'm not hungry. I've eaten to my satisfaction at each meal. I haven't been hungry at all throughout the day, but we'll just keep it real on this channel. So since I have extra points left over, my mom, is gonna be here any minute. We have a fire going outside of the backyard. We have some tunes going. We are going to relax. I have an interview tomorrow to try to start at the AGB here where I live. And we're gonna have a drink, dang it. So I'm going to take this Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar and turn it into two different drinks. So I'm gonna pour half a can in a cup, add one ounce of bourbon and plenty of ice and just drink on that. And then I'll have one more of those. So I'll do two ounces total of the bourbon with this can for a delicious little, little late night <laughs> cap, I guess, if you will. I love old fashions. Those are my drink of choice, but to have those, you have to have simple syrup, which I have, but I don't want to use points for. So I prefer to just do something straight and mix it with something that is zero points so I can keep my points a lot lower. I'm gonna be left with two points that I didn't use today. You have up to four points that can roll over into your weeklies each day. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let those two points Roll over to tomorrow. All right, well, I am happy to have the first video under our belt in this new house. It's gonna be a lot of fun, I'm excited. There are so many angles and spaces that we can do now uh, that we are not limited to cabinets above our heads. So it's gonna be a fun ride and I'm happy that y'all are here with me and I will see y'all next time. Bye y'all.